and here I come. Here I am. Hello, everybody, and welcome to In-House Con. We're in season two. Thank you so much for joining us. I am your host, Derek Mackey, and welcome to the show this week. I'm so excited to have our guest, uh, the first and actually a series that we're going to be doing called The Ladies of Star Trek. So I can't wait to get to them. But before we do that, I have to cover some basic housekeeping first. So for those of you who have never joined us before, and for those of you who have joined us before, here's a little reminder for you, okay? Uh, here on Zoom, Zoom likes to control what you see, and it typically lets you see what it hears. So if you want to make sure that you are always able to see everyone who's speaking, I suggest that you use Gallery View in the Zoom app. If you don't use gallery zo uh, view, as I said, Zoom will decide on who you hear. So if someone is trying to be real quiet and someone else is speaking and the other person burps, you're going to all of a sudden click over to their camera. Uh, or if they make a laugh because one of our other guests were telling a joke or something, you're going to see the person laughing and not get to hear the rest of the story. So please use gallery view. That's what we recommend for everybody. Unfortunately, unless they've made an update since we've been off the air, which I probably should check that out to let people know, if you're on a phone, uh, the phone doesn't allow you to do the gallery view from what I understand. Either way, doesn't matter. Sit back, relax. You're going to enjoy the show today no matter what. We're going to have a lot of fun, okay? Now, we do uh, invite partway through the show everyone who's watching the ability to ask our guests questions, which they will answer live on the air. And the way that you do that is in the Q&A room, Q&A. That is in the bottom right hand side of your screen, little button that says Q&A. If you go in there, you can send a question which the people, uh, the guests will answer or I will answer. If you're in the chat room, the chat room is only for the fans. Our celebrity guests do not go into the chat room because they're focusing on being live for you guys. So please don't ask questions in the chat room unless it's amongst yourselves. Please ask it in the Q&A room. You can start sending your questions in at any time. And when we get to that point, we will go over there. So I need to let everyone know to make sure that you do follow us on all of our social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, at Cool Waters Prods. It's the same handle on all platforms. I also want to make sure that you guys join us for our upcoming events, which are already pre-scheduled. We have March 6th, which is Comic Books Rock. And we have April 3rd, which is Bringing Creatures to Life. It's some uh, actors and special effects artists. Also, I didn't uh, forget, I forgot to mention this last week, but on March, I believe it's the 13th, it's on our website, you can check, the 12th and 13th, we are actually joining forces with a convention in Ireland, and the portions of their proceeds go to an amazing charity. It is a hospice program for children. It's a very sad, but they really make the children feel at home and we're trying to raise money for this hospice care for children in Ireland. So if you can join us on the 12th and 13th, on the 12th, we're gonna be doing a Ghostbusters panel with our Ghostbusters ghosts. And on the 13th, we're gonna be doing a Disney panel with some of our Disney talent that do voiceover. All of the tickets and autograph sales for those two events are not done through the normal in-house and Cool Waters websites. Those are done through that event's website so that they control all the money for the charity. All of the information is on inhouse-con.com. We ask you to check that out and support the hospice. We really appreciate that. I need to send a shout out, some special thanks today, Trek Report, Be More Super Podcast, Trek Central, Trek Sphere, USS, Kachulin, a fan club, which those are the guys in Ireland. I'm wearing your pin today. Thank you so much. And the Comic-Con Network. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Also, today, we have a special group watching all the way from Brazil. And I actually want to bring on, really quickly before we bring on our guests, my Brazilian co-host who's going to stick around after the show in Portuguese, Luis. Why don't you say hello to everybody? Hi, Luis. Hello. Good afternoon for everybody. I'm so glad you could join us today, Lewis, and thanks for, for bringing your fan club along and being a sponsor of the show. Why don't you tell everybody that's watching here in the other parts of the world that are not Brazilian a little bit about your club and what you guys do? We're we'll, in Brazil, uh, work with Star Trek since 1989. 
and we do conventions and we like to bring actors to Brazil. And we've been there with Doug Jones and you guys were some yeah. of the most gracious we hosts that we've ever had. So thank you. Well, Lewis, thank you for popping on and saying hello. And we'll catch you in the Portuguese portion of our show at the end. We'll okay. see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. All right, so now without further ado, I'm actually going to bring on our guest. Uh, for those of you who normally watch us as well, we usually show video clips. If you've been watching our videos on YouTube, you've noticed that we've been removing the video clips due to copyright infringement. I don't know why they, cop they say it's a copyright infringement. We usually show the trailer for the shows that they're coming up in, which is nothing but free publicity, but apparently they don't like it when we do that. So we've done away with the video clips for the moment and it's going to be a straightforward introduction. Please welcome my very special guests today, Janet Kidder and Rachel Ancherell. Let's bring them on. And everybody's clapping in the background even though we can't hear it. Here they are. Hello, hello, Rachel, <laughs> Janet, hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. This is very exciting. Yes, we I agree. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited to have both of you on and thank you so very much. Hopefully this afternoon will be uh, fun and exciting. And uh, if anybody needs to get up and use the bathroom or refill your drink, feel free to do so. That's why we have a live show and it makes it hilarious to watch everybody do that. Just make sure that you are wearing pants if you get up. That's it. All right. So before, before we take fan questions, I actually have prepared some of my own questions. I've, I always research my guests. A lot of the guests that we have, I actually know very well because they're uh, not only clients, but dear friends of mine. And, but even when I research for them, I find things on the internet that I didn't know and I will, I will ask it on the air. So I'm gonna ask you guys a couple of questions. Either one of you can answer first. I've got some predetermined questions for both of you. And then I've got some predetermined questions for each of you individually and I'll let all of our listeners know out there, neither of our guests have heard these questions from me. This is all live and spontaneous for me. They have not been tested. They don't know what I'm going to ask. I promise I'll be gentle. Okay. <laughs> so the, the first one, uh, this, some of the first questions are all Star Trek related, and that's because even though you guys have an, an amazing body of work, Star Trek is a large reason of why we're here today. And so the fans you know, wanna know some of these Star Trek questions. So our first one, is how did you land your role on Star Trek Discovery? Who'd like to go first? Um, I'll go first. Janet. It, was, um, it was just another audition. I didn't know that I was auditioning for Star Trek Discovery. They like to keep things very, um, very close, uh, I think, in this world. And so it was um, sort of an untitled audition that I had for a really you know, very strong, uh, powerful woman who was challenging some kind of um, admiral or something in the scene. But certainly I had no idea that it was Star Trek until um, I got the call that I had booked it. So it was a complete surprise. <laughs> now, Rachel, before you answer, let me ask Janet this. When you found out that it was Star Trek, what was your reaction? I was pretty stoked. I was pretty excited. Yeah, I have to say, uh, it came as a, a very, a very pleasant surprise. It's not, uh, it's not a genre that I that I know particularly well, and so I was really excited. Very cool. Yeah. All right, Rachel, how did you land your role on Star Trek Discovery? Um, I auditioned <laughs> for a couple of other roles in the show uh, in the first season from hotel rooms, which was awful and probably not the best way to give an audition tape. But Janet, you know, sometimes you just, when you're on location, that's what you gotta do. Um, but I had better luck once I did an audition here at home. Um, and there's kind of a neat story with that, but I don't know if, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Um, but I, after I did the audition, I saw this license plate that sort of referenced something with regards to the show, how I kind of knew. And I thought, oh, I wonder if that's a sign that I actually booked it. And then I found out I booked it. We, my agent, we sort of heard about a certain code name. Uh, so I kind of had. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, we'll keep the code name secret. That's fine. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> I 
think there's been a few, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can attest from the positive feedback that we've gotten from both people that are watching live and people who will watch this later on YouTube that they are thrilled that both of you, you know, were on the show and that you're joining us today. So congratulations to you both. I'm I'm happy for you personally. And, and I thank you for, for joining up when they handed you the role. I can't imagine any actor going Star Trek. Nah, I'm not going to do that. But really? you never know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now that leads into my next question, which you guys kind of maybe touched on a little, but I want to be more specific with it. Were either of you fans of Star Trek in any form before you were on the show? Or was this like your introduction to the whole uh, franchise? Do you me to go first this time? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. Right. laughs> um, I used to watch the original series with my mom when I was a kid. Um, and some people already know this. My mom was a super fan when she was a kid. And she was one of the people that wrote in to CBS getting really upset. So I'm sure it was very cute to have a letter from like a seven-year-old or six-year-old, however old she was, uh, begging to keep the show on. So for her and for that, I'm eternally grateful. So, yeah. That, Janet, hold on one second before you answer, but that actually, Rachel, was one of my research questions about your mom because I was reading that. So it, in, in, in theory, your mom was one of many people who helped keep Star Trek on the air when the original series was pulled because the fan letters were coming in and the studio was like, maybe we better not take this off the air. So let me ask you, so in a way you kind of owe this gig to your mom because if it had stayed on the air, you wouldn't have been in the show. 100%. She brought me into the world and she wrote letters. So I <laughs> So, okay, I'm going to let I'm going to let Janet answer the question and then I'm going to segue into my next part of the question for both of you as well. So, Janet, go ahead. Um, same as Rachel, I was a fan of, you know, Captain Kirk and Dr. Spock and I used to like watching them lift all those like styrofoam rocks around uh, on on the sets. Um, but then that was it for me. I, I don't think I had seen another Star Trek uh, by choice until I watched um, season three of Discovery. So it was, uh, it was all pretty new for me, but I did have that original, you know, the original show in mind. Excellent. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my co-producer and tech guru extraordinaire, Tyler, on the spot. I don't usually do this, but I want him to activate his camera and his microphone and join us for one second. Tyler, come in here, please. There he is. A, I'm gonna dress up world. more for you. All right. All right. <laughs> well, hey, haven't I warned you before that you have to wear something nice in case my internet goes out? You, there's no wildfires in California. You're doing fine now. Uh -huh. You're doing uh -huh. good. Here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, at least you're wearing a Star Trek t-shirt. So, Tyler, I needed you in here because Tyler is a huge, huge, huge Star Trek fan. So these Star Trek shows are extra special for him. Uh, but I need him to answer this question in order for the ladies to then reply to the question. The question to the ladies is going to be, are you a Trekkie or a Trekker? And uh, Rachel, you can actually answer it also about your mom. Is she a Trekkie or Trekker? But Tyler, tell us all the difference between a Trekkie and a Trekker. Well, back in the day, Leonard Nimoy used to say Trekkers back in the day. So you were a Trekker. But then Trekkie sort of came about, oh, I want to say maybe in the 90s, early 2000s. But that's that was the original, you were a Trekker. And... Now, George Takei says, keep on trekking when you see him at conventions. So it's, I'm, I'm a trekker, but that's, that's just me. But I don't know. It's, I think, to each their own. Okay. So thanks for joining us, Tyler. We'll see you later. All right. Now to the ladies. So Rachel, you and your mom, trekkie or trekker, and Janet, trekkie or trekker? Trekker. Okay. Trekker. I have always said Trekkie er, uh, and I would have automatically said Trekkie for my mom but apparently I'm very wrong so I will say uh, Trekker as well times two. <laughs> okay well I didn't mean to put you guys on the spot and Tyler actually explained it very well but there's there's been a lot of conjecture on the fan convention circuit about what Trekkies and Trekkers are Trek, Trekkies and Trekkers are the way that I always looked at it was that and I don't mean any offense to this, guys. I'm just, it was a way to separate it from me is that Trekkers were more original fan base and Trekkies were more overall franchise 
with a lot more knowledge fan base, kind of like geeks and nerds. They're both kind of the same thing. And because of uh, shows like Big Bang Theory, geeks and nerds are actually like heroes now and nobody makes fun of them. So yeah. Trekkie and Trekker are kind of the same thing. But I guess it is based on your generation and, and who you are and what you are. So either way, Trekkie or Trekker, we're all in family here. So it's good. But yeah, so there you go. Okay, cool. So let me see. Oh, this is an interesting question for you both. You both happen to play characters on Star Trek Discovery that need makeup. Uh, Janet, I think yours is probably a little bit more intense than Rachel's, but tell us a little bit about the makeup process because people are always interested in what it's like to wear it, perform with it, how long it takes and things like that. Who would like to go first? Janet, you go. That's fine. That's fine. Um, my makeup process was approximately four hours um, each morning. Um, and so sometimes I would be at, on set uh, in the hair and makeup trailer at like, you know, three, three o'clock in the morning. Um, it was a full, full prosthetic head and neck uh, and ears and, um, and the wig. Uh, so, but for the first, you know, for the first half of my makeup session, I kind of got to lie there and meditate a little bit while they stuck all the, you know, the body on and sort of worked their way up my face um and at first i found it very interesting to act because we had to have a few makeup tests because i was kind of restricted in my mouth uh movement so whenever i would smile or try the whole the whole face would sort of bend here so after several makeup tests we finally got it down to to an art and actually acting with it uh was really exciting um because you're literally hidden behind a mask and so the it kind of gave me um a confidence and an opportunity to discover and explore then perhaps uh i wouldn't have been so confident doing if it was my face out there so um, I actually really loved it. I would do it again. Just say it. So, <laughs> so a little bit of the makeup gives you, you're able to hide a little bit behind it and give a performance maybe with not being so exposed. Uh, conscious of who you are or exposed. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of gave, you know, as actors, we're all kind of hiding behind characters anyway. Um, and so this just gave me a, another layer of, of um, you know, freedom, it felt like, uh, because no one could see me. I mean, although I was recognized by somebody before they even saw the credits, and I was like, what? Does it actually look like me? Because I didn't think that I looked, that Osiris looked like me at all. But, um, but yeah, I really, I, uh, see, I don't know how much I look like that. Uh, but I, but I really enjoyed it. I would do it again. <laughs> And the hands okay. and the nails, everything was such a, it was such a full, complete uh, embodiment for this character to have all the stuff on. It was great. Did you get to keep any of the jewelry? I actually have a prop ring I was going to wear. I'll go get it in a minute. I got to keep my uh, ring and I also um, asked the executive producers if I could keep Osiris boots. So I got some really good kick-ass villain boots and, um, and a ring. Okay, well, you're gonna have to do some show and tell. Okay. <laughs> uh, why don't we do this? We'll, we'll pause your video while Rachel answers the question, okay. and that'll give you a minute to go grab your show and tell. So okay. Tyler, pause Janet's video. Rachel, let's talk about your makeup and, and how it all works. Um, yeah, so mine was, uh, my process was three hours to three and a half hours. Um, I was about an hour in prosthetics, an hour in beauty makeup, and an hour um, getting my hair done. Um, the hair was like doll curls at first. I'm sure people have seen the photo of me that I actually sent for Doug with my hair all piled up and you know trying to keep the curls. As you can see, my hair is wild. Um, so trying to keep the curls nice and neat. Um, the prosthetics, it, it, was, it was the pieces going on and um, painting it. Um, and then the breathers went on while I was on set um, and the lenses in my eyes once I was on set as well. So those were two things that I could 
go without. And lunchtime, I got to peel off my breather so I could actually eat, <laughs> which is which is really nice. Yeah. And do you feel that you were hidden enough behind some makeup to be like what Janet said, a little bit more carefree with your acting? Or did you feel more like, because you, for you, you can still tell that it's you in the picture where Janet, at least it, she's got all that face makeup on. Uh, unlike Doug, who's in complete prosthetics, you don't even know who he is. But how, how do you feel about, you know, hiding behind the makeup that you did have? I was worried that expressions I had because I'm very animated in real life. Um, and I was actually worried that expressions would be hidden. So I didn't know how much people would be able to read what I was thinking or what I was trying to remote. Uh, but I think people got it. A funny story though, about being recognizable or not, um, you know, before like before the show airs, you're really not supposed to tell anyone. And, and um, I didn't tell my mom and I was so excited for the show to air, the first episode that I was in, I was so excited for the show to air. And uh, it aired and my mom watched it. I was like, oh, hey, did you, did you watch that episode of Discovery? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, and then? <laughs> she, and she was like, I don't, I don't know. And I was like, you didn't, you didn't recognize the red shirt? And she was like, oh, was that you? I was like, oh, come on, my own mom. <laughs> So, um, so that's so funny. It's so funny to listen to Janet's story and like how she felt in it. It's so fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for your mom, I would have to imagine, again, being a trekker, that to have, well, first of all, to not recognize you is hilarious, but to say that her daughter is now in the show, I mean, was she just not head, head over heels for you? That it's like, you're in Star Trek. We used to watch this when you were little, like, oh my God. Yeah, it was really cool. And she doesn't, she lives uh, very remotely um, for work. And so I don't get to see her very often, um, you know, once every couple of years. So it's really nice that that was something that we could bond over such a long distance um, together. So it was really nice. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's incredible. All right. So before Janet, you do show and tell, I have to flash our little exclusive logo. We haven't used this for a while, but what everybody is about to see right now is an exclusive to this show. No one's ever seen it before. And the, the chances of you seeing it at a convention, if Janet goes, are going to be rare and slim because most ca actors don't travel with their treasures and their, their, their cast pieces. So this is going to be an in-house con exclusive for Janet's show and tell. Okay, Janet, you're on. Okay, so here is my, um, my magic ring that, that I pressed the button to kill uh, my useless nephew. Uh, so there's quite a lot of, of power in this, in this beautiful piece of jewelry here. And then I just have like the most kick-ass Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, Osira uh, boots that I'm still trying to find an opportunity to wear out just casually somewhere uh, <laughs> for, for a night here. But um, these are such an amazing piece of, uh, you know, memorabilia for me. I might just put them in some kind of a box with my, with my ring and my ears. I have two of my, my ears as well and put those in some kind of glass case somewhere we'll see absolutely you could and you know what i don't usually pay attention to the chat room but i just saw one of the things flash on the screen and it says bring them to the star trek celebration in vegas i janet will. Is going to be a guest there janet think about it maybe don't put them in your check bag it's got to be in your carry-on please you don't want to lose them but maybe you could bring them and wear them one day on stage maybe i'll just maybe i'll just wear them because actually they're really comfortable which i know looks a little bit crazy but because there's a it's like there's a platform in here, so it doesn't really start. So it's not as high and as crazy as it seems. Um, I promise that I will bring them and I will wear them. Awesome, all right, fans, look at that. <laughs> very cool, very cool. I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited. Yeah, me too, I can wear them again. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, moving on, moving on. And I see that we have some questions. Guys, keep your questions coming into the Q&A room uh, because I do, I do. I do want to get to them, but I do have some other questions. I'm going to switch from my joint questions and I want to go to the individual questions for you guys. And here we go. Janet, I'm going to start with you. 
And a lot of people may or may not know this. I mean, first of all, Janet, I have to, you, you have no idea how excited I was to be having you on today. And my mom, Anise, who's the co-producer of this show, executive producer of the show, she's watching right now. She watches every week. And I'm not going to get teary-eyed. I'm having a lump in my throat. Wait, give me a second. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, Janet is the niece of the amazing, amazing Margot Kidder, star of Superman, Amityville, uh, uh, just a slew of other things. And Margot was uh, one of my dearest friends and an amazing human being. And so Janet, to have you now as a client is like she's come home because I see her in you and it's very really eerie, but thank you. And so what I want to know about Margie is, um, did, was she an influence on you? Uh, did she help you get into the business at all? And is there a story that you could share maybe about her for the viewers? Um, yes, and first of all, I actually got quite teary-eyed when I saw the, um, the pre-show uh, reel that you had and saw her assigning um, some photos. So that was quite a shock to me. And I was, I'm glad that there was some time between then and now so that I wasn't, didn't come on here all, all teary-eyed. Um, my dear Margie was a huge influence to me. I was on the set of Superman 1 when I was um, seven years old uh, because they were shot in uh, London. I, I was on the sets of, of Superman 1 and 2 and, you know, so I got to spend a lot of time with her. And I remember wanting to be an actress when I was seven, not even because of all the filming that I was witnessing, but because I wanted to dress like her because she had all these, just these beautiful clothes and, um, and have someone come and do like hair and makeup uh, for me. So I just really wanted to be an actor from then. Um, and I got to spend so much time with her and watch her on set. Um, Anyone that's ever worked with her up here in Vancouver or anyone I've met in Los Angeles or anywhere um, always says like what an amazing professional my aunt was on set. And that is something that she instilled in me right off the bat. One of my first jobs was to play her stand in um, in the Nancy Drew series that was shot here in Vancouver. 30 years ago, oh my God, something like that. Anyway, um, and, uh, and so I was her stand-in for that. And she was like, you know, you get to set on time, you, you stand where you're told you do this and you do that, uh, you know. So she was a consummate professional. And she also, one of the things that she stood out for, one of the reasons she got in trouble on Superman sets is because she stuck up for the, uh, the little guy often. She uh, made it clear to me that, you know, on set, uh, we're all part of a team. We're all equal. It doesn't matter if someone is bringing me water or signing my paychecks. Everybody deserves uh, the same amount of respect and care and love and gratitude. Um, and so that's something that I carry on set with me um, every day, every time I'm on. It's, she's definitely with me um, for all of those reasons. Um, I got to work with her on a show called Made in Canada, where I played her assistant. <laughs> and um, that was a wonderful experience. It, it really, really was. She's, uh, she's just, she was so dynamic and like such a, um, such a fun person to be around on set. She made everyone laugh and yet she was quite, you know, could be quite fierce. I'm trying to think of a, a specific story. There are just so many um, I don't know if I can think of one particular one, but, uh, she certainly used to like going to conventions where she'd call me and be like, honey, I gotta go to wherever I'm off to. And she said that she'd be sitting there with Carrie Fisher. So there's like, you know, the seven year old Lois Lane and the seven year old Carrie Fisher. And people would be like, you're Lois Lane. <laughs> and so she used to find that really, really, really funny. But, uh, yeah bless her for all of the uh, wisdom and um, excitement that she gave to me for this business. Well, I, I can tell you that one of the people that Margie and I used to travel with a lot as well was my dear friend and client who you all know, Doug Jones. Yes. And, uh, Doug was actually the one that 
tipped me off privately that you were on the show before anyone knew what was going on. And what he said about you, because he knew Margie, he said that you, that it was like Margie was there because there's something about her that's in you, yes. the way you, your presence and the way you perform. And he said it was like having Margie back again. And it was kind of eerie for him, but he was really happy about it. So she definitely has passed something on to you because to have someone who had just met you, Doug Jones, tell someone like me who considered Margie family, something like that, it, it shows. So keep it with you always because then she'll always be with us. She'll uh, always be with us. I promise that for sure. She's, she's here all the time. I feel like she's thoroughly enjoying this. I think she would be so excited by this, uh, you know, this gig. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to hug you. And uh, oh, no, it's so great. <laughs> anyway, thank you for that. Rachel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on for a qu to, a, uh, to a question for you. I just um, want I, Janet to keep talking, though. I just tell me more <laughs> stories. I got really into that. <laughs> uh, we, will, we will let Janet talk more, but we got to give you a chance to. So I, I saw online that you directed a couple of shorts. So not only are you a, a actor, but you're a, a director as well. And I'm just wondering, can you talk a little bit about those shorts? Is it anything that you'd like to, to promote? And if not, that's fine. Is directing something that you'd like to do more of? Would you like to direct a film or a TV episode? Like where, where is your path going? Is it acting, directing, a little of both? Um, it, okay, so actually it, it, they weren't shorts per se. They were, they were first specifically for Woodbine Racetrack. I was doing, uh, I approached them. Um, my mom used to work at the racetrack years and years ago. Um, and I had started going with my other half as sort of like an anniversary thing. And um, I grew up with horses. So I, Janet, you and I talked about horses years ago, I, I remember. Um, and, I, and I just had an idea and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna give this a try and I'm gonna pitch them and see if they liked it. And they liked it and they accepted me first. I'd never directed anything before. So it was, they believed in my vision for them. Um, and it was really great. It led to a lot of opportunities, but it seems that every time I get really focused on being behind the camera, Gratefully, I go in front of the camera. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm just trying to work both of them out. Um, we'll see what happens. But I, I've had a love of photography for years. I've been shooting pictures with my other half since 2007. So I have a real love of being behind a camera. And I, um, I'm trying to get a little bit more refined in having something meaningful to say when I have the opportunities to be behind the camera. So I, it's just more working on myself right now, my techniques and learning, but um, every time on set, I'm always learning from the camera guys or the director. Anytime I have a chance and they are able to, I don't just, I have to be very clear here. I don't just run up to them in the middle of a shot and be like, oh my God, what are you doing here? It's like, I'm, I'm you know, it's if we have downtime in between setups, then they're open and able, then it's great. So I've, I've really been lucky to just keep that side of my life going. Yeah. That's, that's great. I wish you the best of luck with it. I hope you do get to do some more things and that something we can all see. That would be great. Good luck. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at my notes and there's actually a question that I wrote on your individual sheets, but they're almost kind of the same question. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask it to both of you and then each of you can answer. So, because they both have to do with franchises. So I didn't realize I did this. So for Janet, Janet, you were on some other franchises on television and I just picked two of them, Earth, Final Conflict and Arrow. These are genre type of, of franchises. And I'd like to know how they differ from the Star Trek experience. And Rachel, basically the same question for you, you were on various shows but I picked two one of them nurses and one of the other one Winona Earp and those are those are very different genres but still a type of franchised uh, you know series so how did it you know differ and compare to Discovery who wants to go first with that Rachel Janet Janet you go <laughs> um sorry is it me yes yes oh, oh um I have to say that that being on Star Trek was unlike anything I've ever done. It was like um, 
I, I didn't really fully appreciate the Star Trek world, the family, the, the enormity of, of this franchise until I was uh, on set. Um, Arrow and Earth Final Conflict, they were, they were really fun. Um, it was fun to be a part of something like that, but it just, Star Trek just feels totally different. Um, I sat down in the trailer my first day and Jonathan Frakes came up to, to say hi, and I didn't know who he was. Uh, because I didn't ever watch the show, but um, he was immediately just so excited and so welcoming, um, and that kind of energy just rubs off on you. I don't know about you, Rachel, but for me, it was just like, it just felt like magic from from the moment. I, and when you stepped on set and you saw the like the magnitude of the world that they have created, um, and everyone really loved being there. Um, it was just so much fun. It was, it was an energy unlike the other shows. Um, and Earth Final Conflict was many, many, many moons ago. Um, and I did have a, a lot of fun. I remember shooting off a lot of big bazookas in that, which, which was a, a, really, a really fun time. But Star Trek, I think, will stand out as a, a very unique, a unique experience. Thank you. Rachel, how about you? Yeah, I agree too. I'm totally with Janet on this. Like you walk on Discovery and you're like, whoa, like it is massive and everything about it is massive. And the aliens are massive. Like they're so tall and you're like, I'm in this world. And, and I remember the first, first day where I was on the bridge, I was right near Patrick and Emily Coots was like right there and going up to them in their, their areas and being like, whoa, look at this screen. Like I was a kid in a candy shop. So it was, it was definitely, it definitely stands on its own. Um, Winona Earp was great. That was, I, I would, it was, for me, a lot of the shows that I've done, I've come in later on. So after the show's already established. So Winona was really neat to come in earlier on. And um, that cast is, incredible they're so kind and i mean they have a huge fandom as well and they're very dedicated fans so it's it's it, same thing with trek it's nice to see these really warm fandoms i have been exposed to fandoms that have not appreciated me at all uh which is fine um <laughs> it, it comes with the territory but uh um nurses was awesome i came in with them on second season just started airing in December in the States, I think. So I'm really hoping to get back with them too. Um, but just, they're all different. They're all unique in their own ways. And um, I'm just grateful to be working always. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you ladies for sharing that. And I, I'm gonna do just two more questions and then we're gonna take some fan questions. The first one is for, to, to, to Janet and then the, the other one's gonna be for both of you. And Janet, I just have to bring this up because Again, it's another franchise, but it's not TV, it's film. You were part of the Chucky franchise, uh, yeah. the movies. You were in Bride of Chucky. And I'm just curious, I love horror movies myself. And I was just curious what it was like to be in this. It, it, was, it poked fun at itself in the series, which was good, because the first Chucky was really like a normal horror movie. They, it didn't try to poke fun at itself, but when they realized how absurd it was, two through whatever didn't know what it was doing. But Bride of Chucky, nailed it and a lot of films copied it after like a Freddy versus Jason and, and stuff like this where it made fun of itself but it was still a gory film and <laughs> so I want to know what it was like you know was it fun for you and did you get to see the dolls and were they eerie in person up close it was really really fun I mean my character you know coming on when I wafted on to set in like a pink boa and like you know feathery pink satin underwear it's like okay it kind of sets the stage right there for you to have to have a blast um i was really fortunate because i actually had to have a scene with the chucky doll like we spoke to each other and it's amazing because there's a number of different dolls obviously there's the there's like the pretend chucky that doesn't speak and then there's the then there's the animatronic doll that does work and so out of chucky's rear end is like this much wire 
and cables that go to um, underneath the set where there's like a 12 foot platform where all the puppeteers are doing each individual part of the face. Like there, there's, there's, I think there was a, a 10, at least 10 puppeteers down underneath the set. Um, and so I had to pick up the animatronic Chucky and, uh, and talk to him and he spoke back <laughs> and it was a little weird. It's like, you know, and the movie, as you said, it, it kind of, you know, it made fun of itself. So it wasn't really a scary, scary movie, but it was kind of eerie to uh, have this evil doll, you know, um, be talking to you. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, the, the title, The Bride of Chucky, is also in brackets like Chucky Gets Lucky. And um, after my death scene where the bride kills me, they then have um, plastic doll sex in front of a fireplace <laughs> because Chucky is so <laughs> impressed with his wife murdering us that uh, they get it on right there. So it was, uh, it, it was a great experience. And it's really funny because it's one of the first things people mention when they, when they see me or talk about me. It's like, oh, Bride of Chucky. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, it's been a, a long time since I've seen it. So I'm going to have to go back and watch it now. <laughs> Okay, uh, last, question. <laughs> last question before we do the fan questions, and this actually has become a staple with any Star Trek guests that we have on the show. So I always keep this one particular question on for the Star Trek shows. And here we go. Obviously, the Star Trek universe has a whole bunch of devices. A lot of the devices, some of them we hold in our hands, was inspired by Star Trek. So I would like to know from each of you, what Star Trek gadget or technology are you so happy uh, uh, doesn't exist in the real world? And what Star Trek gadget or technology do you wish existed in the real world? We'll take a minute to think about that. Whoever's got the answer first, throw your hand in the air. Tick tock, it's like Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. And it kind of looks like she's got it. I, no, look, Rachel had Rachel does, answer. Rachel okay. does. Okay, Rachel, go for it. Okay, I'm glad that we don't have the time travel to jump 932 years in the future and not be able to come back. Um, and I wish, this is totally because of Commander Non, I wish that there were such thing as phasers, like all the phasers that I got to hold because they would be really fun. That's... I don't know though. I don't know if that would be a good thing to introduce. I don't. In the well, right hand. You said it now. It's in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> we want phasers. We'll know who uh, to come to on the first phaser incident. <laughs> Janet, how about you? I wouldn't mind one of these. I wouldn't yes. mind one of these. It's like, listen. You know, I'm not feeling awesome about this and blah, 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 just a little zap. Even if I just zapped you out of my house, I didn't know you don't need to like be zapped forever, but just maybe away from me. I wouldn't mind one of these. Um, and I'm kind of glad we don't have the, oh, I, maybe we do. We don't have the kind of the holographic, you know, jumping in sort of hollows in your living room. Uh, kind of chatting because that might take us all a bit by surprise if you weren't really ready for it like at least with something like this you get ready but if someone was just to appear <laughs> in the living room and start chatting I don't know about that so <laughs> I'm kind of glad we haven't done that yet but I'm sure we will they're, they're gonna have to make it like a phone call where it rings before the person can be there <laughs> so, okay I'm, I'm already I'm already oh you just caught me it's such a, a moment I was you know yeah <laughs> All right, very cool. I love it, I love it. I thank you for sharing. So now, without further ado, let's get to our fan questions. Now guys, these are in no particular order. I just kind of go through and ask away, okay? So, where can we start? I should have read some of these already. Okay, this one is from uh, Lucia R Raz, and it's for Janet. Was it good to play a very mean character? Oh, it's the most fun. Um, you know, you get to do things that we as uh, respectable, normal human beings 
uh, don't get to explore and experience very much. So playing somebody that had that kind of power, that kind of um, determination and drive, it was quite a cathartic and, uh, and fun experience. Yes, I really, really enjoyed playing a, a villain, especially a green one. All right, thank you, Janet. Our next question is from Janice, and it's actually directed to both of you. Both of you had multiple roles across both TV and film. Do you prefer shooting for TV or film and why? Rachel, why don't you go first on that one? Um, I have to say, I think Trek shot like more like a film than a TV show, first of all. Um, I... I like TV because I like the schedule <laughs> so on, on some of the other shows like Nurses, for example, it was like, oh, the earliest I get picked up is like 5 a.m. Latest I go till is like maybe 8 p.m. It's kind of night. It's kind of, you know, I know I get to come home and have home time and family time. So that's probably why it's not very exciting. My answer was not very exciting at all. <laughs> Sorry, Janet, better answer from you. Um. They are both different. I think that shooting Trek felt like you were shooting a film mm -hmm. because um, the, you know, you had three cameras going at one time. So it just felt like, you know, it felt like it went really quickly, but you were getting an enormous amount of coverage um, all the time. I find sometimes television is a little bit of a machine. So, you know, you kind of just, everyone's got an eye on the clock and then it's like, you got to keep going. You got to keep the pace up uh, and get your day. Otherwise someone's going to, someone's going to be getting an earful. Um, but also if you're really in the groove, it's really exciting to work like that. Cause you know, you get energized throughout the day and then you can start drinking your diet Coke like early afternoon to keep you through the rest of the, the day. Film, um, film is just, it's just different because it's like, okay, we have two scenes to shoot today and we're going to take the whole day to do these two scenes as opposed to, you know, 10 pages of dialogue on television. So it's a really different, uh, really different thing for both of them, but they're both wonderful in their own ways. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for the question, guys, and you can keep them coming. The next one is from Craig. Uh, ladies, thanks for doing this. You must get so much love from the fans when you do an appearance at a con. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Guess what, guys? Neither one of them have done a con yet. Well, no, Janet, you did, what, one or two way, way back in the day, I think you told it, me. It, it, yeah, it's like Earth Final Conflict 100 years ago. It wasn't, uh, it, I don't remember really what it was, you know. What it was like. What it was it, like. It was like an acid trip. So, actually, Craig, we can't answer your question because they haven't done it yet. I guess we'll have to, what you'll have to do is come to their first con and ask them uh, in person. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see, who can we go to next? This is from Eric Grulke, and it says, Hi, Rachel. I enjoy seeing your photography on Instagram. How did you get started? Is it a lifelong passion, or is it recent? Um, I've always loved cameras. Since the first video camera my granddad bought for the family, I was shooting stuff. Um, I, um, photography... This is kind of weird. I went to school to be a police officer. That was my education, uh, my first education. And I loved crime scene photography. I had a knack for it. I, it's so random. Um, but I, I, we, we got serious about it actually. When I got married, we got a camera for our honeymoon. And then we started fighting on our honeymoon over who got the camera. So as soon as we came home, we bought another camera. And since then it's been a his and hers and that's the deal. Um, and that was 2007. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's been a love affair, I think, for a long time. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Our next question is from William Conlin. And it looks like it's directed to both of you. Playing alien races that previously, sorry, that previous, sorry. <laughs> playing alien races that previously existed in the Star Trek universe, did you go back and research uh, Barzons and Orions in the other series? Um, 
I remember Orion's being in the original original. So I remember like some s green slave Orion's in in little cages. Um, and so I did a little bit of that kind of, of research um, just to see how Osira could possibly have, you know, become this powerful, very sort of liberated and autonomous female in this in this sort of slave race. Um, I made up a lot of the story myself, but but yes, I kind of I did a little research into into seeing the backstory of the Orions and how and how they sort of changed their role over the the years. All right, Rachel, how about you? I just had the one episode to go with, um, and I watched it a couple times just to see what Bovani was like and if she had anything that I could borrow from and, and add to my performance. But I was really lucky with, with that, just having one episode and um, just to be able to um, develop my own stuff. Um, and then, of course, when we get to meet the Barzan family too. So uh, just to be around them was really cool. That has nothing to do with the question, but they're extra Barzans. So there you go. <laughs> no, it's perfect. It's, this is the stuff that the fans like. Trust me, trust me. Okay, our next question is from Rhonda Durr. And I believe it is for both of you again. Is there any of your own personality in your character's personality? Rachel, you go first. Yeah, I think how non walks and how she she's just very stoic i think if i'd been a police officer i probably would have had the same kind of body language i would have had the same kind of um obedience maybe uh, um she's a lot quieter than i am though <laughs> I, i'm i am way more like ah! and she's not as very stoic so i think uh so let's say no <laughs> there's, there's no no Okay. <laughs> Janet, how about you? Um, yeah, like I have to say, apart from, you know, um, I have never killed anybody and I, I don't think I would ever do that. But certainly um, the Osiris' uh, sarcasm and her uh, sort of calmness in that is, is definitely something, you know, um, I'm a very sarcastic uh, person. Um, so that was, um, that was definitely me. I think the rest of it, I don't know. I like the way she, I, I, I tend to want to believe I might walk into rooms like that sometimes, <laughs> but that might just be a figment of my own imagination. <laughs> All right, our next question is, there's a, these are great questions, guys. A couple of them are the same, so I'm trying to also tell them that they're answering right now, so listen, uh, but we're, and I'm looking for the questions that I wanna ask. Okay, so, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you remember, okay, this is a good one. This is from Cesar Lima, and it's a question for Rachel. Do you ever wonder if you might be back for a few more Star Trek episodes being it being it Discovery or maybe Strange New Worlds flashbacks, Anson Mount's new show. Time will tell. I, I don't know how to answer this question. Uh, it would be great to come back. Uh, maybe. I. Some people had suggested to me on social media, uh, they said, oh, well, maybe you could be in that show. And I was like, I don't think I can go back in the future. But there was some sort of loophole that people had found. I can't remember what it was. Um, so either or, I mean, it would be great. It would be neat to see Ethan and Anson again, 100%. Um, and it would also be great to see the Discovery crew once again. Time will tell. Time will tell. And in the Star Trek universe, it is all possible. So get ready for your phone to ring. I think that's, <laughs> that's the answer. <laughs> so the, our next question is from Edson Santos, and it is to Janet and Rachel. Do you think that the production of, sorry, I think he's Brazilian, so I'm trying to make his English, and, and I don't mean any disrespect by that. I just want the question to sound right. Give me one second. Go. Okay, do you feel that the production of Star Trek Discovery, and I'm gonna to add to this, and other franchise series like The Expanse, for example, have given more opportunities for actors in Canada to be able to work. 
Rachel's like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say, yeah. I mean. Because here, yeah, I'll interject a little bit here. And, and most of the world as a whole knows that the leads of a series are typically, sadly, either American or they're British. And it's because they have these longevity, these longevity in their careers and they have a fan base from so many different parts of, the, of their careers that they've done on stage, film, and TV. So I, this is to expand on the question. In order for some very talented actors to have a shot at being seen, when these shows are done in a place like Canada, instead of Hollywood, you know, are you guys getting better opportunities because that show is there and other shows, like I said, The Expanse, I think Orphan Black is filmed up there. You know, a lot of shows are filmed. So maybe you could just expand on the question, on the question as an overall thing, you know, is, is having film production in your exact area in Canada very beneficial to you and your fellow actors? You know, let's expand on it a little bit and talk about Canadian production maybe. Um, um, I think having shows uh, that are filmed up here give <clears throat> give Canadian actors a certain amount um, of opportunities that uh, may not have been possible, obviously, if it was shooting elsewhere. I still feel in my heart, unfortunately, that there's still kind of a cutoff and it's like, you know, I felt very lucky to be playing Osira. I was quite surprised that they picked a Canadian to play Osira. Um, from what I gather, a lot of those roles are still generally, generally thought of, you know, to, to be going to Americans. So I, I, I do think that it's still a challenge to break, through that ceiling as a Canadian um, with these shows that are shot here, but certainly like, you know, having the entire bridge crew of Discovery, you know, well, most of the bridge crew of Discovery live, you know, live and work in, in Canada. So that's really great. Um, I don't think that, I mean, the opportunities are gonna be there for, for sure. I just wish that we had a little tiny bit more clout in terms of, you know, being able to get roles like Osira more often. Um, but yeah, I think having the productions up here benefit, benefit us absolutely. Okay, thank you. Rachel, yeah, did you want to expand I, on I totally agree. Everything Janet said, I totally agree with. And I, and I think for me too, the role that playing non, she was only supposed to be in for a couple of episodes. That was it. So the fact that they kept bringing me back was big as a Canadian performer, I think. Um, but I, I agree 100% with everything Janet said. Yeah. I think I can attest uh, only on a personal level, only because I, I moved to Hollywood myself to be an actor. And, you know, I know the challenges that all of you go through and some of our previous guests. And I do find it a shame sometimes that they will choose an American over, you know, uh, someone local, you know, strictly because they're a name. I mean, you know, people become names because they're given a shot, but if you don't give new people a shot, there'll never be new names. And if all the names die, then what? So, you know, I think it's important that productions do try to expand a little bit. And I think Hollywood is getting better at it, certainly. And, and certainly as well with things like Netflix and Hulu coming in, you know, to our lives, where everything isn't a major motion picture on a silver screen. You know, we, there's a lot of production that surpasses some of the movies that we see that are airing on Netflix and Hulu and, and they do give some unknowns a chance. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. certainly. Our next question is uh, for Janet and this is from Brian Garner. And Janet may not be able to answer this, but let's just throw it out there anyway. Brian would like to know, did Osira really die as we don't actually see her die? Oh, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows, right? I think that Osira is totally 
strong enough uh, to to lie there and pretend that she's dead. And maybe at some point when Michael was busy, she could slink off and shoot out of some pod somewhere. And who knows? Um, I would love it if she wasn't dead. But uh, at this point, I don't, I don't have any inside information, apparently. I just, you know, I had to say goodbye to her lying on the floor. So I don't really know. Um, I'm in the dark as much as you. But I had, I had some pretty exciting ideas about that she might not really be dead. So we'll have to wait and see. I would love it if she wasn't dead. But then she'd take over. So then what happens? I, I would come in and I'd just get you out of an airlock. I'm sorry. Ron would just step in and just push that button again, you know? So I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, I, I think what you need to do after today's show is get your mom on the phone. <laughs> yes. Tell her to write a letter and you're, you're going to be the second signer on the letter. And then we're going to get every fan to sign that letter that we want uh, Janet to come back. So yes. That's your, mom's, that's your mom's job after today's show. Yes. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. All right. Our next question is directed to both of you and it's actually from uh, Lucia Raz again and I'm going to combine these two questions because I kind of want to get it out there. So the first part of the question from Lucia is what was it like working with Jonathan Frakes as a director and are you excited to be going to conventions when the pandemic is over? Rachel, let's start with you. Uh, the first question was, how is it working with J Jonathan Frakes as a director? Yes. He's a real, like, his actor comes out in full force. Uh, he's awesome. He's really, he's so much energy and he's just so enthusiastic. And he's really, I mean, I, I, I think, I think I only worked with him once, which was when Arium passed. Um, uh, but it was awesome. It was such a good, such a good time with him, full of energy. Um, the, the second, the second question, I, I kind of, I kind of put it in there when, when Lucia asked, because I, I want it to happen, but they, 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 she or he, sorry, uh, Lu, it was Lucia wants to know if you're going to do some conventions when the pandemic is over. Oh, this is my warm up. Um, I'm slightly terrified. Uh, so we'll, <laughs> we'll just, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm excited for when that opportunity comes. Yeah. Good answer. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Janet. Um, working with Jonathan Frakes as a director was, was a phenomenal experience. He's lived this world for I don't know how many decades. And so um, he would be, he would yell action and we would be, you know, looking at the, the green screen. He's like, okay, and now you see the ships are firing at each other. Bah! And he'd bring it all to life so much that, that as an actor sitting there, not actually looking at it, you could react without feeling too embarrassed um, because he just brought it all to life and uh, he made it so easy. The crew loved working with him. He made everybody laugh all day. Uh, it was it was a, a phenomenal pleasure working with Jonathan. I hope that I would get to work with him again. Um, he was brilliant. And yes, I'll go to as many conventions as I possibly can, um, whenever we can, I'd love to. Wonderful, wonderful. So guys, I'm gonna interject there because as most of you know, uh, Janet, of course, is an official client of Cool Waters Productions. She is on our client roster. She has already been announced for the Star Trek event in Vegas. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and I'm gonna put Rachel on the spot, I've been, I've been trying to swoon her to join the company officially. So now the pressure's really on, but whatever <laughs> makes you feel comfortable. I, I can tell you this, guys, anywhere in the world that you're watching from, the best way to get any of our guests or any of my clients to a convention. See, everybody thinks it's, it's all me. I just call up a promoter and go, hi, Janet Kidder wants to come to a show. Uh, well, promoters get like a thousand phone calls from a thousand agents asking the same thing. Part of their decision-making process on who they pick is fan demand. So the more that fans put out in the universe on social media, if they log on to a promoter's website and contact the promoter directly, the best, that's the best thing to do. Contact the promoter directly, get a bunch of your fans to sign a letter, just like Rachel's mom is good at doing. 
<laughs> and say, we want to see this person at your, at your local event because the more demand they see for it, the promoter is more than likely to, to go, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Cool Waters has that person. Well, let's get Derek on the phone and make this a reality. So the fans can help uh, get all of our guests, yeah, including yeah. Rachel and Janet, to a show. So, uh, Rachel, maybe I'm going to employ your mom at this point. <laughs> she's good at writing letters. I think we've got a job for her. Okay. I think we do. <laughs> I'm curious about this question from John Hancock, directed towards Rachel, because I don't quite know what it means. Have you started your lockdown project of counting your books yet? And do elaborate on that for the rest of us, because I don't get what John means. <laughs> oh, oh, hi, John. Behind you. <laughs> I... I, I'm actually sitting in a mess of books right now. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I'm start, I decided I'm going to move my bookcases because what else am I going to do with my time? Um, and then I found myself in a heap of books. So um, this is just a small section. Uh, there's a lot more and I'm kind of embarrassed to show off the space, but uh, I will get that number for you. I, it's because I'm a hoarder of books. I cannot let books go. I can get rid of almost anything else in my life, but books are really difficult for me to go. So we were talking about how many do I actually have? And there, there's hundreds. So I'll get to the, I'll get that number. I'll let y'all know. Okay. <laughs> Watch your Instagram posts. Yes. Our, our next question, we're getting towards the end of our show, guys. Hang on. We, we always go over the hour that we advertise and I, and I appreciate the guests and the fans hanging on and especially when there's such good questions. So I'm just going to ask a couple more before we do our sign off here. This next one is from Paolo Alv Alves. For Rachel, which one, my, I gotta move my, yeah. Which of all the captains would you like to serve with? Um, oh, that's kind of unfair. Cause that's playing favorites. Oh, <laughs> um, an honor to serve with Captain Pike. Would have been an honor to serve with Kirk. Would love to serve with Saru. If, if, in, like, I just, I loved being with, I loved non Saru and Burn. I just love that whole. Oh, but Giorgio, too. Like, she's. The, I, uh, I can't answer that question. <laughs> I can't answer it. I can't. It's too, too many. Ah, yeah. I, I, I am not biased in any way. But I would like to see you serve with uh, Captain Saru. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's do two more and then we'll do our little sign off. The next question is for both of you. And this is a fun one. This is from John Hancock as well. Now that you've been on Star Trek Discovery, or maybe it happened, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to his question. Maybe it happened for another film or TV show that you are part of. But have you had any weird fan encounters on the street where you live. Rachel has, she's like, yeah, yeah. share please. Yeah, I love going to the X uh, in Toronto. We have the exhibition at the end of the summer, it, like signals the end of summer, right before going back to school. And it's great, it's a big fair and rides and it's awesome. And I, <laughs> one time I, I, this was for a different show, um, I just had someone stare at me and they were like, no way, whoa. And I was like, what, what's happening? Like, what, what's going on? You were, are you, you're not, oh. And then the friends started coming and I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but hi, I'm going back to uh, target practice, the game over there. And I, <laughs> it was just, it was just a bizarre, like people look at you kind of, because you're out of place, right? And I think I've probably done that before where I've been like, oh, that, I know you, I did that with Woody Harrelson. I was in Montreal shooting something else and we're coming into, I'm coming into the hotel after set and he's coming out and I looked at him and I kind of did the same thing. And I was like, oh, that was Woody Harrelson, you know, who I adore. So it just, I think it's out of context. I think it's. <laughs> no, no, that's, per that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Janet, how about you? Um, I, I, except for one journalist, no one knew that I was uh, Osira. So I certainly haven't been recognized on the street um, for my role as Osira. Um, I feel like people often look at me and go, do I, do I know you? I feel like I know you. 
And I'm not the kind of person to go, well, yes, probably because you've seen me on something. Um, so I find that I don't, I don't get recognized very much for specific roles, but I think I have a face that people go, I feel like I know that face, but, um, but not really uh, too specifically yet. <laughs> Good answer. I like that. All right. Our last, our last fan question for today. And guys, uh, thank you so much for sending in all your questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to them all. A couple of the Brazilian people, uh, if, as you already know, you've been instructed, uh, you may get a chance to ask your question in Portuguese uh, later. So don't worry, we might get to yours. But thank you for sending them in. Key thing is, guys, again, get those letters out to the promoters, get them to the conventions, and then you can actually come to the convention and ask them the, your questions face to face. So our last fan question is going to be from Rhonda Durr, or D Dyer. Sorry, I butcher names all the time, guys. So sorry, it's my thing. It, you're lucky that I can even say a name at all. I don't remember people's names. It's horrible. Okay, if this is for both of you, if you were to play another character on the bridge, or let's, let's expand, if you could be any other character in the Star Trek universe, who would you want to play? Oh, that's a tough one, Rhonda. We've, we've, we've got them with their thinking caps on. It's Jeopardy again. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Rachel, you've got it. I can see it in your eyes. Go for Rachel. it. Rachel, yeah. She's badass, yes. <laughs> she is a badass. I, I think I could see you playing that. <laughs> Get your mom to write that letter too. Come on. Write it. Come on. <laughs> Damn um, it. Who are you? Oh, I wouldn't mind being, you know, Captain James Picard. Um, you know, shoot for the stars, I say. Um, that's, that's probably my, my choice. As I said, my, my knowledge is, it's much more limited than you guys. That's for sure. So, you know. <laughs> All right. Good answer. I like it. I like it. So guys, this is going to bring us to the, to the official close of our normal, our normal show. The Brazilian people know that they need to stick around as well as our two guests. But before we, I have my guests say their goodbyes while they're live on the air, I do need to say my official thank yous to some key people again. We need to thank Trek Report, Be More Super Podcast, Trek Central, Trek Sphere, the USS uh, Kachulin Fan Club, and Comic-Con Network. Again, great, great thanks to you all. I want to thank our sponsor today, Lewis out in Brazil. Thank you so much. Tyler, Sarah, my co-producers, my executive producers, none of this show would be possible without any of you, and I thank you. Now, guys, we are a small family-run business. Even though I'm a manager out here in Hollywood, I don't make a million dollars like William Morris does, and I always thank everyone who participates in our events, both live conventions in our little TV series here online. Uh, the autographs that you purchase and the tickets that you purchase, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting my company and my clients. And with that part, my tech guy, uh, guru Tyler is going to plop up a link in the chat room to remind you all that both Rachel and Janet still have autographs that can be signed. We keep those live until tomorrow. And then Monday, the ladies will, uh, start signing your eight by tens that you order. And the girls are probably going, oh my God, what, what, what? Don't worry, I'll explain everything to you on Monday. So anyway, if you need to purchase an autograph, if you haven't purchased one already, visit the link that Tyler just popped up. So thank you so much. Ladies, thank you. Rachel, I'm gonna start with your goodbyes to the viewers. Thank you guys. So thank you so much for welcoming me in with such open arms and thank you for always being so good to me. Thank you, Derek, for having me. Janet, so good to see you and um, Thank you. I look forward to seeing you at my first Comic-Con. <laughs> awesome. All right, Rachel, your video and audio are going to disappear. Hang tight. We'll see you shortly. Thank you. Janet, your official goodbyes for our show today. Well, Derek, first of all, thank you so much for organizing this. I don't know your team, but um, huge appreciations to all the effort that must go into making this happen. Um, to all of you guys out there, I'm very excited to be a part of your world now, and uh, I hope to see you on the road somewhere. It would be wonderful. Um, uh, I look forward to it. So all of you, please take care. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you somewhere. Thanks, Janet. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that brings us to an end of another episode. Please join us for our future episodes. Right now, we are promoting Comic Books Rock. We, can, we have four comic book artists. It is a comic con online after all. You can order original art from them that they will hand draw for you. You can order that now. I also need to remind everybody in April, we are going to be bringing, uh, bringing creatures to life. That is with two suit performers and a special effects artist. Amazing. And we do have our charity events, the Ghostbusters, Ghosts, and Disney Talent for the 12th and 13th of this month. Uh, those you get online, visit inhouse-con.com for all of the information. Yes, guys, we do have other shows that we just haven't announced yet for season two. There will be more shows. As always, you guys know I have a very short 40 seconds worth of credits. It's not a movie theater. Don't get up and walk away. But again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Cheers and so long.